Tony Poulos here today with Red Hat's Chris Thornton, Ecosystem Development Leader, and Alexei Rusikov, who is the Senior Specialist Solutions Architect at OSS and BSS and Automation. Wow, it's a very long title, Alexei. Uh, we're going to be discussing the exciting telco innovations found in the Catalyst projects here at the TM Forum Digital Transformation World Ignite. Uh, right here in Copenhagen. So welcome, gentlemen. Chris, let me start with you. Uh, could you tell us a bit more about Red Hat's involvement with the Catalyst programs here? Sure. We've been involved in the Catalyst program for about four years now. Uh, all three of the uh, events in Copenhagen, we've been working on at least two or three Catalysts, which has been really good exposure for us. We started with just the basic platform proposition and opened it up to be a full innovation set of capabilities, including automation, and now going through to analytics and AI type of capabilities. And uh, could you tell us more about this particular catalyst, the involving to full network autonomy? Yeah, that's, that's a really exciting catalyst. So we've been working with our champions, um, which are where, uh, have to excuse me for reading them because there's always a lot of them and I don't want to miss any out. <laughs> yeah, so we've been working with Telstra, um, EAND, STC, Telin and Do and our partners, which were Nokia, Microsoft, and Infosys, and uh, Quantel, to be able to build an uh, automation solution focused on a city, a metro area, which we've taken Abu Dhabi, where they run several different events as part of uh, the, work, the, the annual calendar there. And the really exciting things is you might take something like a Formula One, and people will request new capabilities, so they might want to be able to have a certain number of uh, handheld PDA devices for retail and streaming capabilities. So we'll take the intent that's created from that and provision it, but a few months in advance, you probably want to test it to make sure that we can meet the, uh, the KPIs that, that they're going to request for it. So we will um, run that in a digital twin of the network before committing to using it. And then once it's committed, We'll take it up to um, allow them to provision it. And on the day or during the, the week of the event, we can then monitor those using the assurance infrastructure to make sure that it's running. And all of this runs on top of the Azure um, platform, but we've taken OpenShift and put it on top of there, which has allowed us to be able to take the Nokia um, capabilities and take it from on-premises to that hyperscaler cloud seamlessly. Well, Chris, you've, uh, you've done some big name dropping in that particular catalyst. I can't remember any other bigger names coming up. But Alexi, can you tell us about your involvement in the catalyst program uh, showing here this year? Uh, right. Um, I was involved in the catalyst called Spatial Web Open Gateway to the Immersive Future. Uh, and uh, this is somewhat uh, unconventional catalyst in that it not only involves the TM Forum APIs, but it also pulls in the camera APIs, marrying the two together over the same platform. So Red Hat is providing the foundation, the OpenShift platform uh, that is running the applications on top of it, and the API exposure piece, the gateway that actually provides the API both on TM Forum and Camara side. What is particularly striking here is that the catalyst is actually telling the story of decentralized marketplace where several CSPs can contribute to the common ecosystem, where the aggregators on top of those CSPs provide the unified layer for application developers that can consume all the diversity of retail stores in the vicinity, but the virtual world is connected to the physical world because the spatial web is actually about the locality of things that are happening around the actual end user. So you're taking the mobile phone and you are interacting with this new stack um, to actually find things that are happening around you. So you're looking at these stores that are not far from you. You can take uh, goods from those stores remotely, but then fetch them at any point in time. And this decentralized world gives the new ecosystem that provides new capabilities for monetization for CSPs in the first place. So this is one of the cornerstone things uh, that this catalyst enables. This hasn't been possible before because uh, 
the network capabilities needed to be exposed to the outside world. And Camara APIs have become the enabler of that. But TM Forum APIs had to evolve to support these new kind of services as well. So this is a really interesting catalyst in this regard, and that's the decentralized story is what really strikes me. Where people are trying to draw the lines, this catalyst is actually building bridges across the world. Well, Chris, I understand that Red Hat is also involved with the end-to-end -end autonomous service and network resource management catalyst, which has a very long name as well. Why is this technology so important to operators at the moment? Yeah, and it's interesting. It's got a long name, but it's also got a lot of champions that participate in it. And we're working... I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> and we're working with uh, Telstra, with Rogers, T-Mobile and Deutsche Telekom, um, Etisola, Axion, PLDT, BT Group, and Vodafone all are committed to working on this catalyst with us. And we've taken some quite interesting capabilities, which were looking at things like R apps, and if multiple R apps are deployed, which one's going to take precedence? So with the partners that we've been working with, we've built a solution that can you, um, have an ESG-focused R app that's running, maintaining the operator's um, ESG preferences, and then when a customer demand comes in, it might choose to optimize it to the customer's requirements as opposed to the CSP's ESG guidelines. So doing that. And we've integrated it with the work that we've been doing in um, the ORAN Alliance, where we've taken the, the work with the O2 IMS interface and the Metal3 open source hardware manager and built an open, an O-Cloud layer underneath that can be linked to another event type scenario. So once uh, an event requests infrastructure, we can automatically configure that infrastructure to be able to deploy whatever workload we need on top of that. Alexia, this uh, Catalyst program at the Tim Forum is rather unique. And we see all these names, these big names getting together, which they wouldn't normally do to come up with, with Catalyst. But, but what's next for this Catalyst? And, uh, and what other topics are you going to pursue? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, great question. Because, in fact, what we're doing right now is uh, we are finding more and more value in participating in the Catalyst program generally. And, uh, for example, in this particular catalyst that I participated with Entity Data, with Hansen Matrix, uh, Napstract, the uh, new uh, entrant that has been specifically around Kamara APIs, we are helping the real CSPs like Team Brazil and Telefonica in this particular case. So the next step is actually twofold. On the one hand, we of course are going to maintain and extend our presence in the Catalyst programs because we are interested in experimenting further. And of course, the, we will have to go into the AI domain because everybody is going there. So we will absolutely look uh, into what we additionally can enable here. The agentic AI is coming, so we are uh, definitely going to look in this direction as well. But on the other hand, the Catalysts are a great proving ground for the technology. So natural next step in this direction, of course, is to productize and operationalize the outcomes from those catalysts so that each of us could find the realization of those catalysts in real life next year, maybe even sooner. That would be the best confirmation that what we are doing right now is actually makes lots that of definitely, sense. definitely has to be the objective. And what about DTW Asia? Will you be there? Yeah, for sure. We've already signed up to do a couple of catalysts. We're just trying to narrow down which ones it will be. Fabulous. Great to talk to you, Chris and Alexi. Thank you for being with me today. Thank you. Thanks to you.